Some impressive thunderstorms last night in eastern New Mexico. A lot of them had hail. Some very large hail reported around Tucumcari. We're going to cover that a little bit later in the regional segment, but let's take a look at the climate statistics. Not really a lot to talk about. The North Atlantic Oscillation is positive, but it is coming down towards neutral along with a lot of the other indices. And the Matt and Julian Oscillation is in Phase 7, associated with warm weather in the southwest. The surface analysis this afternoon showing a strong polar high across the Great Lakes area, bringing the temperatures down into the 60s and 70s. We are looking for frost and some freezes in northern Michigan, as well as in the mountains of northwestern Pennsylvania tonight. Some of that cool air coming down towards the southwest in the form of a little backdoor cold front, but all the way down to the Gulf Coast, we do have offshore flow. And we get down to Florida, instead of that very stagnant easterly flow, we've got an active weather system down there, thunderstorms, roaming that part of the country, and the tail end of that other frontal system all the way back into the Trans-Pecos region of Texas. The dry line pushed way back to the west. That's quite a bit further west than what we usually see this time of year. And there you go, that shows the dew points up into the 60s, as far west as Wink and Fort Stockton in 50s, all the way back to Guadalupe Peak, Van Horn, and out in the Sacramento Mountains. But out to the west, yeah, that's where the drier air is, 19 degree dew point at Alamogordo and 14 at El Paso. And out there in the western states, a weak frontal system moving through Utah and Wyoming, but producing quite a bit of thunderstorm activity from Colorado, Wyoming, up to Idaho and Nevada. Typically, we don't see rainy conditions like that in northern Nevada this time of year, but today we've certainly got that. Let's start out taking a look at the northeastern U.S. and work our way around the country. Well, there we've got a cold air mass. That's the center. We're looking at the 1,000 through 500 millibar thickness indicated by these red lines, and that puts that cold center right there over Nova Scotia and eastern Maine. Temperatures up there in the 50s and 60s, and this whole area right here is under northwesterly flow. Conditions predominantly fair across that part of the country. This is part of a Hudson Bay vortex pattern that's been in place for at least two or three weeks. That's brought a lot of cold, dry air into the interior of the U.S., and as a result, that's also shut down a lot of the severe weather activity in the Great Plains. And then looking out there in the southeastern states, we've got thunderstorms from Miami up to Lake Okeechobee and Fort Myers. Those have been producing some strong winds up to 53 miles an hour in Lake Worth this afternoon. And those storms could be producing torrential rains up to two and a half inches per hour with some localized amounts up to five inches per hour. And you don't see much out to the east there, but there are some advisories for rip currents. And that could be a factor as we go into Memorial Day weekend. And we will be seeing a coastal low along the Carolinas. That's it coming together right there. So conditions will be going downhill in that area going into the weekend. And some great imagery last night out of eastern New Mexico from multiple storm chasers. This image from Mike Olbinski out there in eastern New Mexico near San John. He calls that the night demon storm. He says it's one of the most incredible supercells he's photographed. He reports the hail core had blue flashing and seeing that in the dark was unreal. Here we have the corresponding radar imagery showing those strong storms near Tucumcari and San John. The storm he was on was the one to the right. And Lori Grace out there near Huatrus, New Mexico, near Interstate 25 reported sprites over the top of these storms, along with the Milky Way in a sky full of air glow. And that's a very spectacular scene there. And here's what the corresponding radar image looked like. And as we mentioned, quite a bit of hail out there, hail up to three inches, was documented by chaser Hunter Fox. Well, it's definitely active this afternoon in New Mexico once again, and in West Texas. We have an enhanced risk for that area. 
And there's that SPC overview showing a tornado watch all the way from Santa Fe and Tucumcari down to the Big Bend, and a severe watch across much of the Colorado Front Range into southeastern Wyoming. Here's that strong storm east of Albuquerque. They develop on the Sandia Mountains. Albuquerque located right there. This is a plateau region, about seven or 8,000 feet high, and quite an influx of moisture coming from the southeast. That's helping to fuel that storm. And right about here, we briefly had a tornado warning on that storm. Not sure if that was actually observed, but here's what the radar image looked like at the time that warning was issued. Nothing like that going on right now. They have kind of died off into a weak cluster and still some potential through the afternoon. There's one possible initiation area west of Clovis, so that'll bear watching as well. And could be some interesting stuff as well around Guadalupe Peak, up there near the top, and around Fort Stockton, the Davis Mountains, and back towards Marfa. So that moisture is coming pretty far to the west, and we have just enough upper support to help organize some of these thunderstorms. And heading up to the Northern Plains, the Weather Service at Aberdeen, South Dakota, reporting a new mesonet station at Lower Brule in Lyman County. That'll give them their third mesonet site, and that's a view from that 33-foot tower. This afternoon, the area is divided into wet versus dry. Got dry conditions out there in Minnesota. The Weather Service at Duluth reporting the possibility of some fire danger. And out there at Davenport, very dry conditions. The precipitable water this morning was 0.27 inch, which is very dry, and that breaks a record for the date by a large margin. And today is the 106th anniversary of the 1917 Mattoon Charleston tornado disaster, the third deadliest on record in Illinois. That killed 108 people in the state. The Weather Service in Lincoln has a special write up if you go to their website under climate event summaries, and it's at the bottom of the page. Anyway, about that wet area, yeah, thunderstorms all the way from North Dakota through Wyoming, just filled with thunderstorm activity, and down through the Denver and Colorado Springs area. And at the current time, we've got this MCS pushing out into the plains that extends from around Fort Morgan down to Deer Trail and to just east of Colorado Springs. I would expect there's probably some spectacular Arcus cloud footage in certain places, maybe up there along Interstate 70. But at the current time, just these two severe thunderstorm warnings for wind gusts and half dollar sized hail. And as we mentioned, numerous, numerous storms all the way up the high plains north of Rapid City. And up there in uh, Glasgow, they've had quite a bit of rain over the past 24 hours, some amounts up above one and a half inches. So let's head to the southwestern states. And that does include California. Phoenix looking clear as a bell, same thing at Tucson. And out into the California deserts, not much going on. But I do see that marine layer pushing into Los Angeles, making a pretty strong inland incursion. And when we get that strong heating out there in the deserts, that helps pull that marine air inland. So we do tend to see that during the warm season. In spite of that cold front being around Arizona, temperatures are almost to 100 degrees at Phoenix. But out there around Yuma, a little bit temperate, only 90 degrees, 92 at Blythe, and out in the San Joaquin Valley, well, there's a better look at that. You're hard pressed to find any temperatures above 80 degrees. And as we move north, we get into some of the cooler mid-level conditions, which means steep lapse rates. And with that strong modification of the low-level air mass, that's also a destabilization process. So we've got numerous thunderstorm elements out there from the Nevada deserts up to the Snake River Valley We've got this one image posted about one or two hours ago from the Weather Service at Riverton, Wyoming, showing a little bit of Mimatis, very spectacular there. And on that satellite imagery, we do see what looks like the upper level low out there around Yakima. 
So we head up north into British Columbia, a new Pacific system coming on shore. But the Gulf of Alaska is quite stormy. You can see that onshore flow right there bringing moisture up to the Alaskan coast. So temperatures are a little bit on the cool side. Lots of clouds, lots of rain and shower activity. And that flow will keep things wet over the Memorial Day weekend, looking for about one to one and a half inches in southeastern Alaska. And heading up there into Canada, it is cool once again in the Canadian High Arctic, a very large chunk of cold air, keeping the temperatures down into the teens and lower 20s across much of that region. That's going to be the center of that air mass. And then dropping south, we get into that heat. Look at that, 86, 88 degrees in western Ontario. And they do have heat warnings in effect from Red Lake to Pickle Lake for temperatures near 30 degrees Celsius. And an update on that super typhoon Mawar, category five still spinning in the Pacific, northwest of Guam, 914 millibars at the last check. And there's a look at the storm going back to yesterday morning. Guam is off the right side of the screen. Now there is a little bit of a gap in the data, but the system does remain symmetric. The only thing that I'm seeing is a little bit of warming in that cloud top. And that could indicate a bit of weakening. And there's a look at it on the Dvorak curve, and that's used to assess the strength and definitely quite a symmetric appearance. Well, a couple of good factors. One is that we're looking for recurvature away from Taiwan, maybe some impacts on the Rukyu Islands. However, with it being May, the sea surface temperatures are not optimal, and there's plenty of dry air lurking to the west and to the north, and that means a downturn in the forecast wind speeds. Well, let's take a look closer to home and look at the 250 millibar chart up at about 34,000 feet. I've changed the color scale to be a little bit more sensitive to lower wind speeds. So the greens are gonna be 80 knots, actually from about 60 to 100. Then we get into the yellows and then reds are gonna be 120. So we're picking up this subtropical jet segment coming out of Baja, California, and that should intensify just a little bit going through the Memorial Day weekend. There it is picking up to about 100 knots in northwest Mexico and that'll bring some higher winds very gradually into midweek into the Great Plains and you can see that right there. That could be a little bit of polar front jet energy. We have to look at more charts to really assess that and we do see that troughing up to the north in Nevada and Utah. So whatever the case we do have stronger shear higher bulk shears, stronger winds aloft, and that could potentiate things going into the later half of next week. For now though, looking at the 500 millibar chart up at 18,000 feet, the middle of the troposphere, there's that block, it's already set up. That's a Rex block with a cutoff high over Wisconsin and a cutoff low down over Kentucky. And that will hold together for a couple of days doesn't look like that breaks up until about, well, to fully break that up, I think we're looking at midweek. However, it's kind of a blocky pattern. There's more closed lows, one over Texas and another in California. The real story though is gonna be the moisture. Here we're looking at one kilometer AGL moisture in green. It is specific humidity, but it's basically mixing ratio or very loosely it's dew point. So you can think of this as 40s to 50s dew points and 60s to 70s dew points out there. That's the ridge axis or the moisture axis from the Rio Grande Valley up towards western Kansas. Now we've also got the streamlines. You can see that troughiness across Florida. So going into the weekend, not really much change except along the Carolinas coast right there. Low pressure area developing 55 knots out of the north. So this is really coming together. And that's going to sling some moisture into North Carolina going into Saturday and Sunday. So there it is. Let me get this out of the way. Higher moisture flooding into the interior. Meanwhile, out there in the Gulf, kind of recycled moisture coming into Texas. Not really a deep fetch because we still got that offshore flow right there. 
Then going into Sunday, that low pressure area moves through the Carolinas and gradually the moisture axis shifts into Virginia and the Delmarva. And out there in Texas still got that moisture axis parked very well to the west, although we're now picking up some westerly flow in New Mexico, pushing that moisture back out into the Texas Panhandle. So most of the severe weather chances will be from Amarillo on up to Dodge City and North Platte. So we're looking at Sunday and Monday here and just kind of more of the same going into early next week. That upper level low breaks up in the Carolinas and gradually pushes off to sea and looks like another low starting to show up there along the Texas coast. Now that could be a factor in limiting the moisture coming north. Usually when we have a, a low pressure area along the coast, that tends to rob the moisture heading north. And let's see if that happens. Yeah, see that breaking up. Not quite as moist up there in the central plains going into later next week. But we shall see. May and June is always a time of surprises and very subtle features that are not handled very well by the models. Anyway, that's all for this edition of Forecast Lab. Got to get this out the door. It is already 6.29 p.m. Central, and I want to get this to you as quickly as possible. So I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you have a great Memorial Day weekend. We'll see you back here on Monday for the supporters for a live stream. Remember, if you want to get the live stream, you need to be a Patreon supporter. Here's the link for that. And otherwise, we'll see you back here on Wednesday. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.